Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Um, so today um, I will discuss about our second chapter, uh, maintenance strategies. Uh, in the previous uh, meeting, I've talked about the introduction to uh, maintenance technology, where we discuss about the definitions, the objectives and the evolution of the maintenance, especially uh, which relates to the Industrial Revolution 1.0 until today's IR 4.0. Um, so um, today we'll see in more details about uh, what are the strategies or types of maintenance that's um, being used or implemented in industry especially uh, in order to solve a maintenance problem in various areas such as um, electrical maintenance, building maintenance, machine maintenance and etc. All right, um, before I go into the details, um, I would like to do some uh, recaps about what we have discussed in uh, previous meeting. Okay, if you still remember, um, maintenance or the objective of maintenance actually. The objective of maintenance uh, is actually to reduce uh, breakdown and we also like to reduce the uh, downtime um, also to reduce the losses waste um, reduce the accidents in our uh, factory or working area reduce the cost of oppression reduce the uh, stocks overstocks all right if you look at this actually with regards to the objective of the maintenance a proper maintenance or a good maintenance will actually produce a positive result which is um, when we reduce the breakdown we actually uh, increase productivity all right so we have more times to produce our products uh, we can actually increase our uh, uptime or our production time and at the same time uh, we can increase our profits with the reduce of losses and as for the waste uh, we can actually uh, reduce or increase a good product okay or we can also uh, prevent any environmental issue okay by reducing the cost we actually increasing the profit the money that we make from our business and then um, we can increase uh, efficiency by reducing the extra stock so on so forth so if you look at here uh, it's very clear that a proper maintenance okay will result in a very uh, progressive and uh, a good environment into the industry or organization all right the other things i would like to touch before we go into the um, main topics today is about the approach of maintenance okay later on i'll talk about the uh, details of each of the uh, types of maintenance but the maintenance approach can uh, begin with a simple up to the 
a complex approach. Okay, so uh, even though we would like to have a, a very precise, a very accurate result from our maintenance uh, process, but the best one is actually to start with a simple process rather than we are choosing the complex maintenance process. The reason behind this actually, when we uh, actually can perform or solve any problem with a simple approach, we are actually uh, using a cheap uh, method which uh, maybe we need uh, less labor or stuff. We maybe need less time compared to the complex one or we don't need any um, equipment or any advanced equipment or we maybe uh, don't need uh, less of outsourcing where we don't have to call uh, people from outside. Compared to um, a complex or a sophisticated maintenance approach, which sometimes we need them, uh, which uh, normally uh, expensive in terms of the uh, cost and then uh, it needs uh, experts or specific skills to perform um, it takes a time time consuming all right and then we may need a um, specific or advanced equipment or tools and then um, maybe uh, we need uh, outsourcing or we need people from outside to come and do the job because we don't have that expertise so uh, important things about a maintenance approach in deciding maintenance approach is to start with a simple approach before we move into the complex approach for solving uh, problems all right okay so let's move into our um, main uh, contents today which is a uh, maintenance strategies where we discuss about the um, details each of the uh, maintenance approach all right so let's have a look uh, at these uh, photos this is actually um, production line at Ford company in uh, 1913 okay um, almost 100 years ago if you can see here uh, there are lots of people working and then you can see uh, so many um, tools spare parts uh, spare parts here down here okay and people, each of them are doing a specific jobs, maybe two or three percent doing one job. And you can see there are so many uh, products is hanging up there and it looks quite messy and uh, quite dangerous. Okay. So now, um, let's look at this picture. Okay. This is actually uh, the same Ford company production line at 2018 okay so you can see here after 100 years the um, production line of the same company sorry uh, evolved from um, so many operators and workers working at the same production line with a quite messy arrangement into um, you can see um, we almost hardly see any stuff down here. The one that's doing the uh, job is actually the robots. You can see the robot here. Okay. There are robots and then all the spare parts things is being uh, arranged neatly uh, on the conveyor lines, production line. So um, what changed actually? Um, between within these uh, 100 years of uh, production sorry okay what is actually changed uh, within these uh, 100 years if you can see here um, we can see that from humans we move into the machine where uh, 
1913 there are so many workers but today's it, it's been replaced by machine uh, the accuracy of the products previously rely on um, human skills but now it's based on the accuracy of the machine uh, previously the uh, production line is rely on the loyalty of the staff but today's it is the efficiency of the machine and you can have a better safety uh, setting uh, a better productivity a more quantity can be, can be produced with a better quality and one thing that maybe we don't realize actually with the change of all these uh, settings so one thing that also uh, need to be changed is the type of maintenance so Today we'll discuss what are the types of maintenance that is uh, available in industry. Okay, so maintenance uh, basically, if you get at the at this um, uh, chart, maintenance can be uh, categorized into two big categories. The first one is this unplanned maintenance, or we call it as a reactive maintenance, where um, we react to the failure and uh, do the repair to solve the problem. So there are two types of uh, unplanned maintenance. One is emergency maintenance and the second is breakdown maintenance. The second category is uh, plan maintenance or proactive maintenance, which is actually uh, this is the maintenance type that should be embraced by uh, any organization or uh, industry where um, every maintenance process or the failures uh, has been planned purely in order to uh, have a more proper and uh, good solution all right so um, under this uh, proactive maintenance you can see here uh, we have uh, first a uh, productive maintenance, uh, preventive maintenance, predictive maintenance, and also we have uh, uh, improvement and corrective maintenance. However, uh, for this lecture, we'll only focus in this um, unplanned maintenance, emergency and breakdown, and also predictive and pre preventive maintenance. All right. So we are not going to discuss in details about improvement and corrective maintenance. All right. So um, type of maintenance that we are going to discuss in this lecture: um, run to failure, or it also called as the unplanned maintenance, which is breakdown and emergency. Second is a preventive maintenance. The third one is predictive maintenance and the last one is uh, total productive maintenance. Okay. All right, the first type of maintenance um, which is run to failure. So what means uh, run to failure maintenance actually? Uh, is required repair, replacement, and restore action performed on a machine or facility after the occurrence of failure. So we are not going to do any uh, repairs or maintenance until the machine or the facility uh, has failed. Okay, so we just use until until it fails. So that's one we call it as run to failure. So it is the oldest type of maintenance. Okay. Uh, there are two types of uh, run to failure maintenance into this category. The first one is uh, emergency, which is carried out as fast as possible in order to bring fail machine or facility to safe and operationally efficient condition. Okay. The second one is a uh, breakdown maintenance performed after the occurrence of an advanced considered failure. All right. There are two types under um, run to failure. What is the disadvantage of this uh, run to failure? Uh, the uh, practice might cost us more uh, compared to other types of maintenance because we don't do any uh, monitoring, 
maintenance repairing until the machine breakdown okay um, there are also disadvantages because if one machine fail it could also cause a failures in another components in the same equipment or in other equipments which leads to low production availability and its activities are very difficult to plan in schedule okay these are the disadvantages however instead of that uh, disadvantages uh, rtf or run to failure also has its own advantages for example um, this rtf can be implemented to a component where the system is uh, unpredictable the failure we don't know where it's going to fail or the cost of performing a run to failure is much more cheaper compared to running another type of maintenance then that is the advantages or sometimes we have a very low priority of uh, machine that we are seldom use uh, where we can uh, tolerate the failure so at that time uh, it's better to embrace RTF compared to other types uh, one example which uh, we rarely do the maintenance for example to the our light bulb for example we just use our lights until uh, it light off break down and we change the new bulbs so we don't do uh, any um, other types of maintenance to maintain our light bulb okay uh, the second type of uh, maintenance is called um, preventive maintenance all right so activities performed on plant equipment in order to protect them and to prevent or to eliminate any degradation of the operating condition all right so we try to prevent the failures uh, rather than let them uh, uh, break down so we try to prevent based on uh, certain criteria okay so the definition for this one uh, according to british standard said that um, maintenance carried out at predetermined intervals so normally preventive maintenance comes with the time base so we do maintenance in certain period of time according to prescribed criteria so what are the problems that we want to solve in what time span and intended to reduce the probability of failure so uh, the machine that's been through preventive maintenance is not totally uh, failure prone or is not going to fail but uh, by doing the uh, preventive maintenance uh, within a specific time frames with a specific criteria so normally or uh, by practice or by the previous data it shows that it can help reduce the probability of the failure the advantage is uh, it can satisfy most of the objective of doing maintenance okay uh, however in order to uh, perform a good preventive maintenance it needs a number of supports um, for example the first one um, it will we need a uh, adequate number of staff so someone has to take some uh, task of doing the preventive uh, task for certain machine uh, we have to decide what are the equipments or machine that can be put under the preventive maintenance we have to skill up or need a staff with a good qualification for doing the preventive maintenance because it needs a technical know-how about the machine or the equipment uh, since it's incurred cost uh, to do all this so uh, support and commitment from management is very important because uh, if you don't have a support in terms of especially the staffing and the uh, funding then uh, we cannot perform a good preventive maintenance uh, uh, one important thing is a, a good planning and scheduling of PM program so anyone involved in this PM must know what is happening around them and ability to properly apply the PM programs actually based on the other criteria here. Okay, um, 
preventive maintenance, um, a good for machine and facilities, which their failure would cause serious production losses. So we focus for the ones that give the highest impact. If you, uh, in, I mean, um, invest for preventive maintenance. So in order to get a, the biggest return, so we find the machine which has the more serious problem to production. So um, the main activities of uh, preventive maintenance uh, includes replacement of parts, adjustment of the machine, overhauls, inspections and lubrication. So these are some, if you can see here, uh, lubrication is basically uh, uh, activities involved in to uh, make sure that our machines or equipment is uh, properly lubricated, especially uh, motors which have uh, gears, rotors, and then uh, overhaul activities, uh, inspection. Okay, regular inspection is one of the main activity for preventive maintenance to make sure that uh, the ones that uh, we perform is uh, having a good progress and also repair and adjustment. Okay, so these are common uh, problems. Let's see, uh, this is one example where um, lubrication is not properly done. Okay, it caused the uh, breakdown into your motors and since the bearing is a crush, okay, or use some sort of uh, things to do the uh, inspection and lubrication to this kind of machine. Okay, so we do some uh, adjustment, polish inspection to our valve, okay, uh, like this one, uh, interval inspection. Uh, adjustment of machine and this is also related to the lubrication all right um, okay one part of uh, corrective maintenance I just want to take this part actually uh, uh, this part is also involved in uh, preventive maintenance uh, in order for us to when we find any um, problems okay when we find problems uh, after doing uh, for example preventive maintenance there are four steps in order to eliminate the uh, problems. Uh, the first one is uh, to detect the fault, find the problem, isolate the problem, and eliminate. And the last one is verif verification of fault elimination, which is we have to uh, test, do the testing, whether the problem still exists or is totally been eliminated. So this is a uh, uh, four steps in doing um, problem solving for any uh, maintenance activity. All right, uh, the next one is uh, a predictive maintenance. As the name suggests, is uh, something we would like to predict what is going to happen to our machinery or to our equipment uh, by actually looking at its uh, physical condition. Okay, so um, so by uh, monitoring the physical condition of our equipment, uh, we can actually see uh, the signs of failure. For example, um, we might see our machine or our motors is vibrating in uh, an abnormal speed. Or we can maybe uh, see that um, there's a heating elements out from our machine. Okay. So there are two types of um, conditions, all right, or parameters that can be used to perform predictive maintenance. The first one is a condition-based predictive maintenance where we define, we uh, predict the probability of failures based on the condition of our equipment. And the second one is uh, we predict the a failure based on the statistical data where the data we collect from maybe one month, two months, three months, one year, two years can actually tell us the trend of the failure of our equipment and machine. So there are two uh, kinds of methods can be used to detect the failure, condition based and also statistical based. Okay. Uh, condition based depends on continuous or predict monitoring of equipment to detect the sign of failure. Statistical base depends on the statistical data from 
recording of the uh, previous data. Okay, there are two uh, approach that can be used to do the predictive maintenance. Okay, um, predictive maintenance is based upon knowing the condition of equipment in a system. So, uh, the first one we would like to know is we we can predict something after we know the condition of the equipment uh, by using technologies that be able to tell us about what is going to fail what is the con uh, situation or condition of our machine for example we can use technology such, such as uh, temperature sensors which can tell us about the temperature of our motors or we can use a uh, vibration sensors that can tell us whether our machine is vibrating abnormally okay and the predictions come from monitoring the condition of equipment as it is operating okay so once we uh, we know what, what is the condition we have the technologies then we can actually predict the uh, what is going to happen to our machine based on the monitoring of the condition or equipment okay uh, as you can see here uh, this is some of the example of technologies where um sorry um for example in this example these are sensors here vibration sensor is connected to the computer and then on the computer we can actually see uh, this kind of vibration graph so uh, if let's say the vibration amplitude is uh, exceeding certain value then uh, maybe we can uh, use the computer to automatically stop these motors or machine so that it's, it's not going to break down okay uh, this one is uh, using the thermal or infrared sensor where we can see actually the heat area of our motors so we can see um, if uh, the motors of the machine is actually overheated or we can also use some uh, equipment like this to check the health of our oil in our machine or engine uh, we can also attach this kind of sensors to read the current or voltage of certain uh, areas of our machine okay so uh, there's a lot of thing can be done based on the technologies and the condition of our machine using predictive maintenance okay these are also some uh, latest technology which use a uh, handheld or mobile devices like this actually to communicate with the sensors being attached to the uh, motor like this so you can use wireless or bluetooth technology okay and then uh, there are also a complete system like this where we can actually uh, read our uh, motor speed vibration and anything based on the sensors we attach to the equipment and we save the data into the computerized system and at the same time we engineer or our managers can actually uh, monitor the performance of this uh, equipment uh, when they are away or they are in their office okay uh, the drawback uh, the disadvantage of predictive maintenance is depend heavily on information and correct interpretation of the information so even though we have a lot of data uh, attached so many expensive sensors but at the end of the day engineers uh, need to interpret what means by that data so that we can uh, do uh, correct action based on the uh collect collected data okay so i think um that's it for today um uh, if you can uh, recap what we have uh, discussed today so there are types of uh, maintenance okay uh, basically we have uh, a proactive or plan maintenance and we have a uh, reactive types okay so this one actually can be divided into emergency and uh, breakdown maintenance and under this one we actually discuss a uh, uh, reactive or we call it a run to failure okay 
mainly about the uh, preventive maintenance and the uh, predictive maintenance okay so preventive maintenance is this time based where uh, we plan the schedule uh, based on the interval of certain interval of time so we decide the criteria select the machine and monitor what are the parameters we like to see based on this time interval so under the predictive maintenance we use technologies actually to monitor the uh, condition of our equipment or machine and also we rely on the statistical data uh, that we have been collected all right so uh, this one uh, we use a lot of uh, sensors technology uh, to monitor and collect the data and then last one is to uh, interpret the data correctly okay all right um so um that's it for today uh, about the uh, types of maintenance uh, so in the next lecture uh, we'll continue about uh, another type which is uh, the most uh, implemented maintenance strategy which is a total uh, productive maintenance that we discuss next in the next meeting all right thank you very much